All right, today we're gonna to be taking this CV Excel shaft out of this Chevy Suburban so we can replace the uh, CV boots on it. So we got the wheel and tire off already. Our CV shaft's located right here, it connects the front differential assembly to the wheel hub for the four wheel drive on this particular model. So first step first on this one is we gotta take this Excel nut off. So these are a pretty big nut and they are usually pretty tight. So you usually want to use an impact wrench to get them loose. Once that nut's loose, I push the end of the axle shaft. It should be free in there. On this particular application, the inner CV it's connected to the differential with six 15 millimeter bolts. There we go. All right, now we have this CV axle shaft or CV half shaft and on the bench here. And as you can tell, this, this boot is totally torn and all its grease has been slung out. So this grease is in here to lubricate the joint, make sure it operates smoothly and freely and uh, protects against wear, keeps it quiet, all that stuff. So. It's really important to keep the grease in here. So this boot being torn needs to be replaced. So what we have to do is we have to disassemble this whole uh, axle shaft assembly. So what I like to start with is I'll start taking these clamps loose. So there's more than one way to do it. You can get a screwdriver in here and spread them open a little bit, slowly but surely until they come loose just like that. Or you can always just use a pair of side cutters like so, and you can cut that off. So most of the time, your new, your new boot should almost always come with these new parts. So uh, you usually just cut them off and discard them in the trash. So I do like to have a bunch of rags and the garbage can handy when doing this job because it is pretty messy once all this grease comes out. So I like to have those sta uh, standing by and ready. So once we get those loose, then we can push our boot back. And on this particular joint, there's a circlip holding this inner joint to the shaft. So if we look in here, this one does not have any eyelets on it to use a snap ring pliers on. So what I like to do on these is I will pull the inside joint apart. It usually comes apart pretty simple, just like that, off the tripod joint. It is a good idea to remember or mark how these came apart as far as the clocking. So, but if you look here, we have a really small snap ring that holds this inner tripod joint to the shaft. So we're gonna take that snap ring out of there with some snap ring pliers. So these snap ring pliers, as you can see here, get the focus. They have little teeth on there. 
And when you squeeze, it spreads them open just like this. So we can get that on our circlip. Once we get that off, we can take off this inner tripod joint. You want to pay attention to which way it came off. As far as going on, a lot of times they are clocked. It's going to put a reference mark. So. Then we have our shaft here. Clean it all up. Get it ready for the new grease and the new boots. to remember is make sure and put that small clamp on and put in the boot down so once you get the inner side together you won't be able to fit it on there so same goes here put your clamp on then your boot then we can go back together with our tripod joint So get it all cleaned up best you can. You're going to have new grease to put in. So we are ready to go. We're going to put this back together. Get our new boot lined up. And now all we have to do is put our, I'm sorry, we have our tripod joint on. We need to reinstall our snap ring to make sure it stays put. So make sure your snap ring's in your groove. That's not gonna come back off. Now we're ready to put our tripod joint back on, fill it with grease, put our clamps on. <clears throat> All right, we're going to take our new boots and we're going to fill them with our grease packs that came along with them. I usually tear a corner off. It's just going to be like icing the cake here, squeeze this grease in. Once we get that in, we'll snap the boot on into position, clean up any extra. And get ready to clamp it. So we're going to put our clamp around. <clears throat> you always want to make sure that you have the, the boot in the groove all the way around. So there should be a groove here that fits. So this is an aftermarket clamp on this particular one. So we find what size fits well. It has three teeth that need to engage those windows on there. And then we're going to use this specialty CV boot clamp plier. So if you see here when you squeeze, it squeezes the ears. And it's the center part that's going to squish that button down. So we're going to get it on here on the ears and slow, easy pressure.
easy as that guys so it clamps that on should be a permanent uh, attachment so should be just fine and make sure this inside boot is in its grooved area and we'll clamp it So we have our inner one done, so we'll tear up in our grease, our outer joint, same way here we're going to fill up this boot with our new grease. boot into position, get this inner boot on its position where the grooves are for it, we're going to clamp it. Make sure this is in position in its grooved area. Get our clamp on here. Make sure, double check our position. As far as that thing goes, then I'm going to clamp it the rest of the way. If you have trouble with these, you can put two breakover bars in these squares here to give you a little more leverage if needed. So just like that, guys, we have our two CV boots replaced. So no more leaks. It's going to keep our grease in, ensure that our joints last a long time or quiet and uh, operate as they should. So easy as that. All we got to do is reinstall on the truck now. All right, we're going to go back together now. We're going to actually wipe this thing down with this grease. Woo got slung everywhere. Cleaned it up a little bit off the suspension. So we're going to lift this guy up in there. So it's pretty simple. You just want to make sure not to cut or puncture the new boot. So we'll line this up on our differential. Get it ready to install. So we have our six bolts. We'll go back here into our differential housing to attach the CV axle to it that in place we'll put our strut back into place so we'll get this lower down in here be careful not to damage our new cv boots strut assembly 
Line up these upper. So I'll start one of these nuts on the top of the strut so it doesn't fall down. Then I'll worry about getting this thing into place. So get that position. Like anything, I want to get all my bolts started before I tighten anything up. So I'm going to start those two lower. Run those down. Oop, wrong size. Get up here. I have all three of my upper bolts or upper nuts started for the strut mount. And I will let the truck down and tighten those here in a minute. Since I'm here, I'm going to put my axle nut on. So it has a washer on this application. On most vehicles, this nut for the axle is one time use. So we've got a new nut here, has new Loctite on it. We're going to run it down. Always make sure and torque this nut with a torque wrench because this nut is what helps hold this hub and bearing together as a unit. So we'll run it down and we'll torque it once we get the wheel back on. Once it's snug, we'll torque it once we have the weight of the car on it. So what we're gonna do now, is we have our axle back in, our strut back in, inner axle bolts are on, our hub nuts on. So we can go ahead and put our wheel and tire back on and get this vehicle off the hoist. So we'll snug those, and we'll torque all those once we get the car down on the wheels. So easy as that, guys.